What's up, humans, and welcome to a new Psychoactivo. Happy Friday, everybody. I just finished a wonderful conversation with Clint Sander from The Night Shift. They had Dan Cleary as a guest, too. He was the tattooed guy who was at the hearings. Do you guys remember that? Well, he has a podcast, too. Uh, and he was invited. We had a great convo about disclosure, about uh, the upcoming film that is uh, going to be presented at South by Southwest on Sunday. We spoke about technology. It was great. I'm going to leave it in the description so you guys can check it out. But while we were talking, there was a Q&A from Dr. Gary Nolan and Dr. Peter Scafish at the Soul Foundation. And they spoke about some really interesting things. Uh, one of the things was that, was that Dr. Gary Nolan, again, revealed a little more details of other groups that are doing the same thing Skywatcher has been doing. And he revealed that they even know uh, uh, how to address these groups as. I don't know what they call them. He just said that. But I think that the most important part of this conversation for me was when Dr. Gary Nolan spoke about consciousness and how there is a way in which consciousness is being created by us, like as in real time, you know? And I, I happen to agree with that. I've been talking about how we do and have been creating the reality we know today collectively. It's been happening forever since we have like a capacity for discernment and for to use our brains. Because um, that's, don't forget, that's the most recent organ of the body that evolved and that's what I think changed humanity forever. The fact that we can think. Uh, granted, we are a very, very young species still uh, because we are very primitive. We are very territorial. We're very tribalistic. But that doesn't mean that we haven't been creating our own reality in a collective fashion. I think that's still happening today. I think that that is something that uh, scientists like Dr. Gary Nolan are already in on studying and learning how to understand the mechanism of it. I was glad to hear Dr. Gary Nolan mention uh, Stuart Hemeroff and the microtubules. I think that uh, Hemeroff's work is one of the latest developments in this whole field of consciousness studies. I think that if Greenberg or Bentoff were still around, they would have arrived to similar conclusions. Maybe they would have named them differently, these microtubules, uh, Sir Penrose as well, sorry. Um, maybe they would have named them differently, but I think it's essentially the same thing. Greenberg speaks about this neuronal field and how the lattice interacts with it, and that's what creates reality. Hemroff goes to say that the mi microtubules is where actual consciousness originates from. I see it as more of a like a road, like a, a back and forth road where consciousness travels through these microtubules. That's the way I see it. I don't know if I'm correct or not, but that's what I understand. And I found it really interesting that uh, Dr. Gary Nolan is talking about this so openly now. Whether you believe what he's saying or not, that is irrelevant, to be honest with you. I know that there's going to be people, people in the comments that are going to be like, more stories, I need evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you guys. I agree with you guys. But honestly, you got to understand this consciousness conversation has been taking place for millennia. People from the uh, yogi community have been talking about this forever. Ascended masters from the yogi tradition, they have been talking about this forever. This is not new. And people who like get really angry at this conversation because they want to see nuts and bolts technology. I just tell you, go back a few thousand years in the literature and see they have been talking about this forever. In Buddhism, there's this belief that uh, whatever the UFO phenomenon is, it's somehow linked to consciousness and spirituality. And I don't know if that's true, but it's not new, guys. They just renamed it psionics, but ESP has existed forever. Uh, at least since we have a functioning brain, since we've been homo sapiens sapiens, you know? And I don't think that uh, throwing tantrums 
complaining about not not being a, a nuts and bolts conversation completely is going to help you in any way because this is just going to keep evolving and more new stuff that perhaps doesn't make sense to you now is going to keep coming out. So I would like just be a little more open-minded and go to the literature. Honestly, if you want me to give you some suggestions of, of what to read, I will gladly do it. But there are like pieces of literature from the materialistic paradigm that do work and that are very useful, such as, I don't know, maybe Carl Jung. If you read a little Freud too, he explains a lot of things that are related to this as well from a more materialistic standpoint. I would recommend you guys go to the literature and educate yourselves in it. Also, philosophy books are very important for this. If you read the Tao, the, the book of the Tao, that explains a lot. If you read Plato, that explains a lot. If you read Nietzsche, that explains a lot because it's different perspectives of people who are trying to understand reality and the world as we know it. And every single opinion of those people that are like, have been studying for their entire lives, all of those opinions matter. And all of them add to the conversation. As long as they're proactive and they take you to, uh, they make you use your imagination more in order for you to come up with your own ideas, I think everything helps. And I just ask you guys to please don't judge new information as soon as it comes to you. Learn from it. Learn the history of it. And then you can make a, a judgment if you want. But just as it comes out, just because you don't know it or you don't agree with it, that doesn't mean it's not there or it's not real or that it hasn't been talked about forever. Be open-minded. I think it's, it's good for the soul and for the brain. But I want to leave you for, with a Dr. Gary Nolan at the Soul Foundation Q&A where he talks about consciousness and what he understands it to be as it is right now. I mean, I haven't seen anything like that, but um, personally, I mean, yes, I've heard claims around the fact that they might be conscious. You know, I, I think science doesn't even understand how the human brain is conscious, right? There's a lot of argument as to whether it's purely material and the, the interneuronal electric charge that creates whatever we think of as, as consciousness. Um, and, and everything all the way to the brain is simply a vessel in which some extra dimensional object, which is our consciousness or soul resides, uh, and it interfaces through. And I, I don't know what the answer to that is. And then there's the hammer off Penrose orchestrated reduction concept of the microtubules are the, the generator of consciousness. So, I mean, let's just say that there's, there's something about putting materials together in just the right way in the, in space time and we are just organized space time uh, allows for consciousness to form and that's what's going on right now and anybody who might be listening and understanding um and uh but so i can imagine that you could do organized space time with metals uh or plasma uh and that would be sufficient to create a consciousness so i don't think you have to be wetware to be conscious. I think that there probably are such things. So, um, but, but this gets back to almost the very first question is like, people go, what do you mean? Oh, come on, a rock or something that might look like a rock can't be conscious. Well, but if you organize it the right way and it mimics the structure of a human brain in some, some way, uh, with metals, why not? Uh, and so, I mean, the only question that remains is whether, uh, such organized structure, can fit all of the three categories of what I just said. Could it do a, or some sort of orchestrated reduction? Can it process information at a level that we think our brains can? And third, you know, if it if consciousness did reside elsewhere in some other extra dimensional plane and needs an avatar through which it operates, can you know organized metals do just what our wetware in our brain does? I don't know, but again, it's something you you don't answer the question when anybody asks you it you you engage in a questioning format with the other person well what do you think how do you think that this could work so that would be that's my answer short and so let me know what you guys think about this from dr nolan uh obviously he is 100 convinced 
that the psionics aspect of it is very, very real. And he's trying to explain to people through his understanding what is happening. And I think that's very valuable because he's one of the important voices in the subject. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know what you think about the entire conversation. I'm going to leave it in the description. Check it out, please. I think it was really interesting. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video today. I got another one dropping a little bit later, but for now, uh, that's it for me. Uh, you know what to do, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Thank you for the support. Uh, we are on the KGRA website. I got some good news about that. I was just told that on the KGRA audio files in the website, Psicoactivo is number two overall. And if you guys see the roster they have, it's a lot of shows. So thank you for the support, guys. Thank you. I'm going to leave links in the description for that too. You can also join the members channel if you can. Appreciate the support. And that's it for me for this video, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, stay curious. Bye.